its members. <laughs> Okay, hey, we have a lot of questions. Yeah, what are the <laughs> questions? <laughs> what do you think we're doing wrong? Yeah. yeah. The heat's drawn everybody away. Mm -hmm. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. It's a pretty lean and mean tonight. So if there's anything anybody needs to add or amend, now it's time to do it. Oh, I'm good. Did Oops. you um I just before did um the town manager's goals that we've I, I just told Therese just to stick in an executive session just because it's yeah. mm -hmm. personnel related. I mean, not to say that the goals are. You no, know, it's come out of executive you know, and, and to, open and talk about it anyway. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Everybody's I, getting I, that. I text. I yep. asked. Probably could be done in open session. I think Therese slows up the schedule on the meetings, Davis, and here. You think I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's we can get up be before seven, we'll, we'll all message it. Yeah. yeah so, oh, <laughs> but, no way. <laughs> Be in my office. Thank you. Yeah. You missed a short one. <laughs> Did you say something, Gene? Did you need? I'm sorry. No. You started to say something. No. Good? I may have, but I forget. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. And we have no appointments this evening. And we have no public comment. Two public comment for okay. me. One, somebody, and I don't know who, maybe it was the town, but I doubt it, put up a little fence at the corner of the, you know, sharp, the turn off of 12 onto Fenley Bridge, and it's real tight, sharp. Mm -hmm. Coming from the town direction, from here? Somewhere. Yeah, but if you, there's, right at that, where that point is, somebody put up a little, uh, Picket fence, really? white picket fence, and it looks kind of cute. <laughs> so someone installed a white picket fence. Um, who's That'll property? Be the state right away there. It's on the high. It's on the the right of way. I'm sure. Huh? You don't I, think the state did it, did you? I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. <laughs> Is it a, so that. it'll be a problem for plowing. It'll it's, be a problem it's, you well, you, it'll be, it's bad. Okay. So, I, well, anyway, public comment. Yeah. Well, I guess, is it a problem? I, it's not, it's not a problem. Okay. I think it looks kind of nice. Oh, maybe huh. the I mean, somebody's been keeping that corner mowed. Yeah. Huh. Well, somebody is. must have installed yeah. it who lives near there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Nice. Okay. So. So, thank you. Well, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And, and the second thing is a question, not a decision yet, but would there be, would it be a conflict of interest for my spouse, my wife, to be the, the one to take the minutes for the select board? I mean, that's a so. question know. that we have, and if it wouldn't, then I'll have. I mean, I don't think. It'd be a conflict of interest for anybody yeah. to take the minutes. It's a paid you know? position. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm we sure can, we can have days that day. Yeah. <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we, we all review them, you know, so it's not. Yeah, like, you get to review yeah, them. Yeah, we get to review them. I don't so. see the issue. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we have had, have and we've put it, and I should say that now, you know, I, I wished I had caught that error in the equity and inclusion committee minutes sooner. There was a met an error in there because they wrote that we were missing the boat by not advertising um, the minute taking position in the listers. Well, somebody is asleep at the switch because mm -hmm. we have been advertising and you guys appointed a lister back in April. Yeah. So those minutes were wrong. I didn't read them until later, and, and I was like, Yeah, but we don't. I mean, that's up for them to amend. No, no, I know. I just was going to correct. If someone was here tonight, I was going to say, yeah. Yes, your minutes were mm -hmm. wrong. But um, we have been advertising yeah. that yeah. position, oh, and, yeah. um, and obviously you already appointed a lister, so there was yeah. no open lister position. But yeah. I don't think yeah, it's a problem. She could try it, and see if she likes I it. I just, no. yeah. So and then, and if she says, I threw it out thinking she would. Well, there's no way she would do it. Yeah. She, see how it goes. Yeah. She she yeah. said today that I'll have to meet with her before. We <laughs> think about it, so. <laughs> I know if she's interested, in, you know, trying it, Phil, but that's fine. And if she sure. decides, you know what. That's fine too. No it's probably the know. most difficult right up front when you start because you gotta kind of yeah. get in the groove of, of you know the you don't want to be too long with them but you don't want to be short. You know. Well, I just 
keep to the facts. Yeah. And stick to the facts. But she was a she was a recorder for our general synod, which is the quadrennial meeting of our denomination. Oh, geez. So mm -hmm. she's done. She's she's taken minutes, everything from verbatim to anyway. That's so great. she's had some experience taking that, doing that, and but we'll. She'll, she's thinking about it. Okay, well, no pressure, yeah. but we'll sign her right up, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that so, was my edge. If she, yeah. My advice is to try it a couple times, see if yeah. she wants to yeah. or not, so. Right. I feel like I'm, I'm, I have the tables on the right side, right? Yeah, right, I just got to sign them back in. All right, so yeah, that's great. I thank her if she's interested. And yeah. Give it a go. Okay. Any other public? Inquiry. Okay, hearing none. Move on. As uh, last meeting, I just had to ask Teresa at the end there if we could just get a spreadsheet that showed what we had out there from FEMA, total amount, and what's been processed to date, and what our balance is. Yeah, I, I hope I, this is what I think we made for the auditor. So I was like, man, well, I'll tell us I'm good. I was giving you the same thing. I wasn't going to rewrite it. So. What if it's obligated or not? At the far left, is it obligated? That that's a good sign. That means that they FEMA has approved the the um, project and they've set aside the funds and it has a price. So then, obviously, the PW is just what FEMA assigns it. That's our project work number. Then the name of the project. This is how we ended up naming them for the April 2019 flood. Then it just shows you what we spent in 2019, 2020, anything in 2021. What the project cost is, then the 75% of FEMA is what we are eligible to receive, you know, from from FEMA, and then when the paid date is when I've received that money. So mm -hmm. the Northwest Quadrant and Peavine are on their way. Um, I had an email from Penelope at the state the other day. Then the 12.5% is the same, obviously, as our share because we have taken all the extra steps. And then remember, we just, I had written the, um, that flood hazard horrible document. So we have, that, those steps help you get to 12 and a half percent so you're not on hook for 25. So the state will not pay their ERAF. They won't give us their money until every single one of these projects is complete. So Pinello has to be done. Then they give us their money. 12 and a half is what we're on the hook for. And you can see what we have paid for. And down at Peavine, you see, I only paid forty-eight hundred dollars because we just budgeted one hundred eighteen thousand the ERAF. So, so this just shows us, you know, what we're outstanding, you know, what we're looking for for money. So we do know. Um, so it's coming. And as far as Pinello, they haven't obligated the funds yet, even though they obviously know we've put in a temporary bridge. Um, we had met with them oh a month ago. And had another meeting with the engineer, so we're still waiting for engineering drawings. So what are they doing? They're waiting to pay the temporary once the permanent bridge is They right? won't. Uh, yeah, they haven't even obligated the money. Because so, they hadn't given us the. <coughs> yeah, they said you can. Go yeah, ahead. Well, you had to put in something. Yeah, but no, they won't obligate it until I think until they approve the final design, and then they'll obligate it as one project. So it's going to be one PW. It's not going to be two separate yeah. projects for mm -hmm. them, but. So if I look at it correctly right now, we have, oh, and then what is the, the CATC management cost? That's my hmm. labor and time we've spent, okay. you know, putting into the project. And that, I believe, we get 100% of, I think. So at some so point, we may get that. 13000 yeah. Something. Probably not, not until I think Peavine is done. Yeah, I think it's the last. Hmm. So what we're outstanding is still the 217, 234, 20. The Northwest and Peavine are on their way. So basically, what we're on the holding the bag for right now is Pinello. And all the state. And all the state, yeah. 156,000 yep, state and they won't, money. Yep, and that'll go up, but they won't give us a dime until FEMA wraps, I think, until FEMA wraps everything up and we get money from FEMA, then they pay. So our obligation that we have left on the books is 38,000? Of the P vine, but we still have. In the total? You we had right here? Yeah, we had 118 we set aside, we have 156. Mellow. Well, we did the 100, yeah, we have the balance of this. Yeah, but I haven't carried over Pinello yet. 
I've only carried over our share of the temporary because we have a big final design. No, but I meant on the projects that have been completed. Yep. Yeah. We still have yep. thirty-eight thousand. Yes. yes. Yep. And we have it in the ERAP in this year's budget too. Yeah. I think we have what fifty. Could be. I can't remember. Or something. something. It's going to pay this off and maybe even okay. a part of uh, the temporary bridge. So. So we should have that. So we are. We're going to still have to budget one more year for Pinello, but so we have, once we get a cost. So Pinello is off of Camp Brook. But Pinello's no. off from Gilead. I'm Gilead. sorry. Gilead. Yep, yeah, off from Gilead. So we have about. And it crosses Gilead. This is the bridge you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, one, just... one, one house. One house. There. I didn't. Doesn't look like it's long enough to have a lot of. Yeah. I know. It's going to be a 100-foot bridge. Yeah, we're going to be a 90-foot like bridge. It used to be like a 60-foot bridge. Yeah. Now it's like 100. So if the state would just sell us the bridge, it was there and walk away. But they won't. I keep pressuring. The guy, was, he's retiring, so I really thought uh, I could do it then. Because yeah. he's leaving. What does he care? But he still yeah. said no. <laughs> Didn't seem like any of the other ones cared when we were doing the water project. <laughs> I know. I was like, hey. He was like, no, Teresa. So still not So we have about 420000 that's coming to us. Yep. On its way now. The 162 and the 260. Yes, sir. Yep. And then we still are banking the 135 on the Vanilla Bridge. Yeah. And the 13 grand worth of, well, I would call that banking management costs. I mean, that's We've already kind of all that. of it. Because mm -hmm. right. we have some in this current year and then we'll put yeah. another into next. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we're basically carrying the 135 for the Vanilla Bridge. Yep. So. Yep. And we're also going to offer the we have for an interest rate on that? One I already paid it off. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no. Oh, we yeah. had like. Yeah, it was, was it 2, 2%? point? I think it was 2.25 or 2. Point. Maybe okay. it was 2 even. But no, I paid that off because that was the deal because they were not happy. So the we. The whole so we, storm Irene disaster. So I, I agreed that every time we got money from the state, I would pay right, them. So we did, them. we paid them off because they were not happy. So when we have an event like this, mm -hmm. we wind up borrowing in order to pay these kinds of... Yeah, yep, you do because um, you end up right out of the gate, you're just repairing. Unless you have a big capital roads budget where you have a capital road fund, then otherwise, um, otherwise, you're, yeah, you're borrowing. We can't borrow from ourselves, right? We can if we have it. Um, and we're starting to build up some money now into those funds. So if it was a small damage, you could, but this was a million. And it depends so. on the size of the event, like the, uh, not that we're fortunate, but the, yeah. the, the spring floods reached mm -hmm. the threshold to activate the emergency services, mm -hmm. the state of emergency. But, but like um, middle of 2000s when we had, we had a bunch of flood up on Camp, Camp Brook Road that year, was it 14 maybe? 2012, 14, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. The town, you know, probably took on a half a million or so dollars with the work up there that was on their own dollar because it didn't mm -hmm. yeah, it meet the threshold. So it's right. wide have to be one million bucks. And then when it does meet the threshold, FEMA will kick in 75 percent. And then depending on what your town has in for procedures, like like we it's have a mitigation program and stuff. If we didn't have it, then we could, we would be on the hook for 25 percent of that. But being that we have those measures in place, it cuts that in half to 12 and a half percent. But it's still, in this case, was. So that's why it's important now when the governor and the president declare something an emergency. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. it frees up like those funds. just had, for instance, Bennington yeah. just had a yeah. bunch of flooding mm -hmm. two weeks ago. A couple or three yeah. weeks ago, yeah. And, yeah. you know, of course, it's not even near the threshold for emergencies. So mm -hmm. they'd have to spend that under their own. Yeah. I mean, I think they applied. I'm sure the state I think they probably tried, tried to apply. Outside. I think they yeah. applied for it, but I haven't heard that they've gotten it. Because uh, what happens that you but you don't see is every time there's a storm of any sort, trees down, like when we had that windstorm, we get a call or an email from either Two Rivers or from a VTrans to say, what do you have? Because mm -hmm. you need every town's damage to help out another town sometimes because if you right. report your damage maybe you only have a few thousand dollars but if you report yeah. it it could kick you over the county yeah. level mm -hmm. versus the state level so and much then, per you county. Know, because if you don't hit the county level or the state level whereas we did right out of out the of gate Parker. with april 2019 we had over a million dollars worth of damage and um we were actually one Austin of the harder hits. And we were the harder hits in the state they told me when 
So that was in April of 2019. So that's why, you know, we always, even if Alan, so I just cleaned it up, I'll be like, yeah, but you know, how much was it? Because you kind of want to let, right. might help somebody else out, get over the The ones that have hurt us in the past have been the ones that haven't yeah. met that threshold that. It will hurt, yeah. That, uh, like those ones in the mid 2000s that cost quite a bit of money up there. Yep. And the scary thing is it won't be the last, right? I mean, it's, no. no. Uh, there it's will a be matter sure. of time. It's like, it seems to be like a, Four, four <coughs> year event, yeah. you know? That's why one of the things when we're like doing now by outsourcing all this ditching and upgrading culverts, every culvert, if it's 15 inch, it automatically becomes 18. If it's 18, it becomes 24. Sure. So we're outsourcing the ditching and doing culvert replacement so as storms come, we can, we can weather So them. all of a sudden, this stormwater thing in the... All right, that makes a whole lot more sense all of a sudden to me. What stormwater? The part yeah, of the better uh, connections. Yeah, the yeah, better connections. connections. Oh, yeah. yeah, they've been encouraging you to do, yeah, you oh, in 2014, maybe I went back and Tim and I met, we were digging around, we found it. They had done some mapping. Um, oh, I think of the guy's name. Jim Pease was doing mapping for the whole state. So you guys had a map, but you didn't have a master plan for your stormwater. We actually, as part of the Better connection did not want that was not our first choice was the master plan. Tim and I wanted to do a specific project that we knew was a problem for us, and um, but they were like, nah, we want you to do a master plan, and then you know, but you can Quit tell that you can try to say, okay, we want these three, we want you to kind of partially design these three, um, three to five projects, and then you'd be qualified for grant money later to deal with them. So, um, but. Yeah, that's why it's in the better. So it ended up just being thirty grand to put towards it. So, um, so that's why it's nice okay. to have those. Thank you. Come. I mean, the good thing is we were in slightly a better position this time around than we were slightly. last time around. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, but I it did. was a lot of work. I mean, this took us. Oh. Uh, we're still doing. Yeah. When did we start the first one? It was June because so we went from June to October that year yeah. on four four major projects mm -hmm. and the Pinella and Pinello temporary yeah mm -hmm. and then those four yeah. and, then and then I did P vine myself over. later yeah, yeah. yeah. Geico Road pump access yep and P vine Tim P -Vine looked over next those year children. yeah yeah because you and I started that yeah. in in June after right yeah so that was fun. <laughs> well, it's good time. Right. You guys are up next time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Rock, paper, I flagged, scissors, I flagged for that flood up on Camp Brook <laughs> and almost got left up there. The last yeah. dump truck was going down and I, I flagged him down. I was like, are you leaving for the day? He's like, yeah, we're all out. They were going to leave me up there. I had no vehicle because you couldn't drive up. But they, right. they had to bring me up. And I was like, can I get a ride with you? Like, been a nice I went down <laughs> Camp Brook in this state. <laughs> Like, nice. yeah. I like, that's I what I get for volunteering. Yeah. Mom and I got to sit at the bottom and listen to everybody bitching about oh, having yeah, the What do you mean I can't go up there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, People yeah. were grumpy. Well, what was funny was we were getting calls because the sign went up about Rochester, right? That can't work to be closed. People were calling the office saying, I can't go home. I'm like, yeah, that's it. How'd you, we're going to take you out for a month. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, of course you can go home. I'm like, it's local traffic. We're just saying yeah. you can't yeah. press the top because Rochester has it closed. But yeah. it was very funny. I was really surprised at some of the calls. It's be like the big truck drivers going to you can't go any further. Uh, yeah. so what's still happening? Back it all the way down. Back to <laughs> do that one time. They're they're do up on again. <laughs> box trucks up on the Gilead. They're, they're on all the roads right now. Did you see the sign that up. Kelly and I made at the bottom yeah. of Gilead? It's yeah. a uh, Ryan, I texted Ryan Slack in the, I don't know, early in the morning that day. I was like, do you have any yeah. signage? I've got, we have this gentleman, we have Chris Fors who's telling us we're getting, he's getting tractor trailers. So I texted Ryan, Ryan, where they were, and he had an old blank that he turned over and we, we just, Hand wrote it, outlined it, and Kelly, you know, colored it in red, and so yeah, they're on all, there they're on like, all no. the yeah. dirt roads right now, trying yeah. to get figure out a way trying to get back instead up. Instead of just there. taking 100, you know, to 107, which, yeah. which would be, is there's a sweet road, yeah, yeah. but yeah. they're not as. Well, no, the they're navigation out. won't take you that yeah, direction because it's not the shortest route. But they're out Dodd Hill too, going up. Yeah, there, trying to get over that. Well, think that about Gilead. Eventually, that's a you know, Gilead's eventually just a go path. 
uh, oh yeah, you can't even get over there with a four wheel most of the time. Yeah. Take, eventually They're trying. Takes you to the world's gone. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, at what point do you just look out the window and realize this might be not going right? You know, like, huh. Well, it's like all the trucks that you see with the big blinking sign at the bottom of uh, Mad River. Yeah. You know, in those areas, it's like, mm. or, the, or the Stowe, and, mm -hmm. you know, don't go over that. Don't go through that anyways. All right. Any further discussion on the, what we got out there for FEMA? Industrial safety. We started to talk about some of the signage on the crosswalks in the downtown. So I had a nice visit walk with John Kaplan. We um, we met here at the municipal parking lot and then walked down to Spalding Press and then back up to Sand Hill. And just, mm -hmm. So he was great. He recommended, um, I gave you his email, so he's obviously recommending that um, we purchase some signage. I The price for the signs isn't bad. It's um, Fifteen hundred and seventy dollars, but what I have to figure out the posts because the steel post that's what's going to be. Is there any the safety most. grants or anything out there for signage? Or? Not right now, no. no. But um, we'll see what we have in our sign package, and I might have a little money left from buying the two signs that we had budgeted in the police budget. If I have money left, I'll take some out of there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Alan has so he's putting his list together. So we're going to see. I'm not sure we'll buy them all this year. We might buy some this year, some next. Mm -hmm. So we had a good chat about. You know safety all the way through the downtown i had told him about the uh, generous offer that mr geico had made about purchasing one of the flashing signs and he said we don't recommend that actually he said no. that you have the led signs he said we no. he could think of one instance where they have this like flat bar he said it reminds you of, like a pre police cruiser um and he was just telling me like the what we have now are the pedestrian sign it says you know 1400 feet ahead and he's like yeah you really need your crosswalks labeled now for example across from babes um when we he and i were walking in front of richardson's and it was nice to do that because you could see you couldn't really see around the corner so we said on the babes side of the road you'd have to put pedestrian signs you know facing down so you'd have to do two on that side of the road you know pointing down to the crosswalk um he also gave me this great visibility pattern which was really nice about the marking the, the sidewalk. Bars, yeah. so like, that way it's nice because yeah. you don't do them where like the wheel wells are so that they that you know lasts longer which is great because uh well there's several reasons it's nice but one in particular too is it's hard to get the paint right now yeah. so that was nice so i had printed this out another he also had some other traffic safety packaging that i gave to um i gave a copy to alan to look at so he also down by gw because gw and sand hill are still basically you know considered school crossings because mm -hmm. he asked you know, I said, well, if kids are coming to town, this is the only way, you know, they're going to come. So mm -hmm. he suggested, you know, pedestrian <clears throat> signs. And when we were looking at Sand Hill, he told us how to sign that. So it was good. He, it was very nice. He walked the whole thing. And then he, uh, I have known John for a while. He said to me, we were by, uh, oh, Spalding Press and Champlain Farms. He goes, can I just talk to you about this for a second? It's just kind of a pet peeve of mine. I'm like, yeah, sure. Knock yourself out. He's like, it's, we had a car pull in and just park there. And he's like, it's so dangerous because there's not a delineation. So of course he had an idea of putting in like a median and I'm like, it's cause you got money, you think we can do that. But I said, what if we just painted the fog line and then five feet over, we painted another white line. So it actually delineates the fog line at the end of the actual road. What is mm -hmm. that, 11 how, what's, how big is a lane? 11 feet over and then do the fog line and then do five feet where the sidewalk so it actually is going to be lined you know what i mean from the crosswalk yeah. at the corners at the store to um spalding press and uh, so i said how about baby steps you know we try that because there might be money down the road for a median because i have seen over the years they talked about science putting in um green spaces there that way it kind of catches any runoff and it filters it, it can you know that sort of thing but i figured we could start with the basics which is paint <laughs> and we'll already be lining because it because you're so always going to have a double parked yeah. area there so it doesn't it's matter if you're lining it's so or not open. yeah We're, it's so yeah. wide open and people routinely exactly whereas he had a plan you know um he gave me a plan for just kind of a draft thing for a, a median 
you know, to plant like a couple of, you know, we hit bollards or some green space or something. Now that I think there would be money for, and that I want to talk to the stormwater master planning people mm -hmm. because you may be able to tie that in one day into a project, which would delineate it a little bit. It kind of forces people to go on the opposite side of that median to get into Champlain Farms, but mm -hmm. that's down the road. Well, how about out in front of the uh, auto parts too? Yep, exactly. That whole stretch right there yeah. is what he was You're talking about. You're good until right after. Yeah. The hardware store. And yeah. It's not filling right it, make it too hard. I use that to turn around. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> yeah. do too. I know. Yeah. I know. Maybe, maybe we can use some of Chris's bump outs. There, there you go. Well, speaking of that, those weird their heads this week. They are. One of my friends happened to remind us. Oh, I did. Yeah. 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 Ye
I was in a town just recently and they had blue crosswalk right. markings and I'm trying and it really it's just it was different and stuck out. You know? Oh it's funny, I would have assumed. But I know some but if you talk to the agency I know they frown upon using yeah, he, he, yellow, he so. did not suggest anything other yeah. than white, and anything he gave me that I gave you was white. Yeah, and, um, was but he, I think so, it was in New Hampshire. I think you've been too many places this summer. New Hampshire, too many, yeah, I was probably in New Hampshire. So anyway, so those are what I'm thinking as we start with... And it was the, longitudinal markings, but they were closed. Yeah. I think yeah. we start with that. I think we start with the outline um, crosswalks, we re do the repattern, and I would like to do the fog line and the strip down by... Um, just to see what happens. Let's just put it into for people to realize, hey, people can walk or sure. cross there. Of course, you know, John's the bike and safety guy. So. Yeah. The, the height of those, I mean, I, I le, or was thinking, are those actually tall enough when you've got cars parked? Are the signs tall enough oh, to be it, seen by the drivers? I mean, that's... It, it, it'll be a challenge. There'll be definitely spots down there to find the correct location because yeah. they have to be within so many feet of the crosswalk. Yeah, they have and to. And like you're saying, it's got to be so high that even when yeah. cars park there, you can and see the sun. What about delivery trucks? Oh, and delivery they usually trucks want them like, right on the crosswalk. Because usually they want them right on the crosswalk. But I yeah. think like the first one we're going to start with is down by Spalding Press. That's easy peasy. And then yeah. we do the other one so we kind of see as we <coughs> go. And um, But... The, the tough part is that they're set by standard. You have to follow, follow the municipal uniform traffic control by standard. So they'll end up, you know, and well, they're the ones. Usually the state has small, I don't even want to say grants because they're not even grants, but small money that they he, will he give might. towns to buy, to buy safety signs. Well, he's the guy because he does all the yeah. grants and he, he, we chatted a little bit about yeah. it. So um, I think yeah. if we were going to do something bigger, but. I'm sure some if it's a couple of grand, he could probably business. find a way of getting finding some money. The cost of doing business, but we're not going to do them all. No. Okay. And uh, we just start with the basics, but I did like the new the package, and you guys didn't seem one way or the other whether you were sold on the LED crosswalk lights. It seemed, you know, at least no. let's just. I think it's. Let's just such get a the, small let's downtown. Get them, you don't get them need painted that. and get them signed. Let's start yeah. with the basics, and yeah. then we can kind of. My feeling is try to layer the layer it, let's start. And we can't do it all at once, so. That's a lot. You're probably about 10 years, eight, 10 years out from the state coming back through, probably closer to 10. Really? To do oh, milling and paving again. <laughs> that was the question like of the week. Year cycle. Oh boy. The uh, question of the week. Are we doing a new paving? We got to pave everything? But those, but that's all, those are things that we should be thinking about now because it's, right. in some cases it's cheaper to just have it as a, not have it as a participating item in the state bid. So like signage in the downtown. Oh yeah. Like if you want to go to something bigger like that, have the contractor, whoever does it. Oh, when you get and then the you just pay. It's kind of like it's kind of like structures or sidewalks and stuff. But the states, they don't. I mean, usually they'll do it through the contract and then the town Oh, I was going to say the they state. usually just tell you. This. Yeah, well, this yeah. is state contract pricing, but yeah. But so I was also right. thinking, you know, what we also have to start thinking about is if the state comes back in here in eight, ten years, we have some sidewalk that needs to get redone. Yes, we do. Like the next time, definitely <laughs> the Pleasant Street sidewalk down mm -hmm. to the school has to get done. But the one but behind the bridge, the one on the wall. Yeah, the one on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> what the state going to do about that thing. But that I thought the dirt just reclaimed that whole sidewalk. We yeah. But we, that, that's not that old. They redid Church Street to not, Pleasant Street. Not, not, not Pleasant Street down in school. That hasn't been done. No, not down to school. Church Street they did. Church Street. Yeah, Church Street they the did, what, five years ago? The yeah, bridge. Another part of the And I think there's yeah. another piece when you go down by Spalding Press around the corner yeah. to Peavine. I think that's pretty bad. Um, but and even that section just past Spalding in front of Fort Fortitude is that's really awful. But those would be that's the spots saying, to yeah. identify for, because when the state comes through, all they do is just the um, handicap accessible areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if there is sidewalk and curb or whatever that we want to do, we yeah. would have to identify that and ask the, oh, sure. they're not going to pay for it, but no, we no, could pay for it now. Yeah. It be done at that time. Well, and the other thing too is by then we'll have this better connections grant done. So I think the road tires on the sidewalk about. down on Pleasant Street. I think you're right. The mm. little curb stub and the mm. sidewalk sunken in. I think too that the, um, you know, the better connections grant will help some 
with the downtown before the state comes in to pave because my hope is that they obviously are going to point out some things that we can do to make it more, you know. Yeah, and then uh, the sidewalk from. 80 to 80, so. Yeah, the sidewalk in front of the um, insurance agency down. Yes, it's that, mm -hmm. that all really needs to get redone. Yeah, we've just done parts of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could always do, I mean, some of those towns, they pay one year and sidewalk the next, you know? Well, you know, when you budget a $1,000 when, Whenever we get caught up, whatever we get caught up for. Exactly. When we budget a $1,000 for sidewalk, it's going to be a minute. <laughs> um, and then the safe routes to schools is, you know, sometimes that's a... Yeah. That's a, but that's, you know what that is. Mm -hmm. That ends up being like 90% engineering when you could have just poured it for... Yeah. yeah, it all depends. <coughs> but um, I don't know if really, I'll look and see if Safe Roots to School lets you redo or if it's only Avenue. Okay, any further discussion on the pedestrian safety in downtown? Yeah, so we'll let Paul let everybody know that the pole belts will be back next year. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't touching that one. <laughs> That's <laughs> all yours, buddy. <laughs> well, I think your name Somehow my name got put on him. I don't know how that happened. I think, too, what we'll do is we'll put, you know, I think moving one of them down to Smalling Press might be, might be helpful, too. It'll take some of the pressure off down. But actually, you know, Rebecca Sanborn Stone had a good point about that. She didn't feel like the bulb outs really were rolled out. So they just kind of showed up so people, she felt like there wasn't a lot of information or newspaper articles of education about them. So her feeling was that as part of the Better Connections grant, when we kind of roll that out, it's like, oh, next year the bulb outs and, you know, kind of let people know what they are and what the reason is for and that sort of thing. So yeah. people aren't, well, you know, there's a lot of misinformation up in out there that it doesn't shrink the area to operate. No, oh, it just right, more exactly. It. Yeah, no, John said he thought they were great ideas. Yeah. I said, well, you will have to send your comments because oh, you well, would. Oh, you come down and I said, you, you would be one of the few positive be John's comments that we got. I said, yeah, we, I can't A little beat black on them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Sponsor a bulb out. Yeah, make some money. Yeah, we'll name yeah. a bulb out. Sponsor, sponsor out. a bulb out. Yeah. <laughs> make some money. I like it. That's a good idea. <laughs> sponsor a bulb out. And we had talked about uh, last meeting. Was it last meeting about yep. the hybrid? Yep. Hybrid costs for yep. meetings. And so I had, um, so there's an email, and Gene was kind enough to ask um, folks at his church how much they'd spent. And they were, you know, about uh, $5,000 for the computer, camera, microphones, mixer, power supply, maybe another $1,000 on great on internet hardware. Mm -hmm. Then I had Vermont Digital come in and do an estimate. I met with uh, TJ actually here, and he gave us an estimate there and a copy of, you know, this is what the system looks like, and this is the card it goes on. And then I had a nice chat with Rob at Orca Media, and Rob said that they, um, they do have an owl, and he was going to, I emailed him, he was going to send somebody down at some point to kind of do some testing, I guess, for sound issues. And then um, we could maybe borrow their owl, um, but we'd still need to purchase, obviously, Zoom again, a television, a car, maybe some microphones. Um, the only thing is, too, is the owls are about $1,000, and I don't know if you have to pay an annual subscription fee. I was trying to figure that out. TJ thought yes, but I couldn't tell. Um, so, but what was very funny was a friend of mine, uh, John Haberstock, is the... Uh, manager in Pittsburgh and he had the TJ they got him all set up with the system he's like I got it I got it it's all good and then I think he's like you know we think you're gonna need someone to run it I got it and then after a meeting he's like we need to find someone to run this because he's right it's just a lot to, <laughs> to like you know to manage so we kind of chuckled about it but um, but I know that the equity inclusion committee is talking amongst themselves about finding volunteers um, to help with it because you would need you know you would you'd need a hand so, um, so, but something so anyway, I wanted so to we're still looking at pricing. I haven't something I wanted to just throw by the board. Um, so, 
just sort of thinking about like community partners that might also use it that could help sort of sponsor some of this upfront cost that goes into it. And um, there's a BRI meeting tomorrow, so I could bring this up if the board was interested, but just looking at like, if BRI was gonna use it for Bethel University, you know, could there be some sort of partnership where we're sort of co-purchasing it? It lives here, you know, the town gets first right of refusal for select board meetings and then other town committees and other town groups can sort of sign up for it much like you would using a space. Right. Um, and, and would that be of interest to kind of explore you know, to help some yeah, do some know. cost savings? Right, because I, you know, I thought that ORCA was great about, you know, the fact that we could maybe, whoever came down to, to do, but we could borrow theirs, but the other committees are going to want to use it if, right. if you know it's just going to spread to that. So if you owned it, then the good thing is it's small enough that we could take it to the town office and lock it up because here's tough. A lot of people have keys. And the TV, I think, is a good idea because the road crew can do trainings mm -hmm. here now instead of traveling for trainings. A lot of the road trainings now are online. So the TV gives them a place where they could do it here, they could socially distance, and, you know, because doing it in the town garage is difficult. So I'm not sure. Um, so I, I haven't even really narrowed down what our option is once Orca comes down and we'll see what they think. Because the, the acoustics, you know, actually Vermont Digital was, was like, not as bad in here as I thought it was gonna be as far as echoey. And uh, so we'll just have to see. But frankly, um, until we get someone you know, to come, volunteer to come in and do it. I, we can't. The, uh, do it right now. Just a, an update or and a comment. And also, too, we don't have the money, so let's just throw that right out there quickly. Right. <laughs> no, for five grand. <laughs> I mean, I think that's why I was thinking yeah. sort of cost sharing mm -hmm. models and looking at yeah. you know, are there are there ways to make it so that we can afford it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our camera at the church can be controlled from the computer. To pan, zoom, yep. focus, all so it's not a just set there and um, so that comment. Plus, I would also say that this past Sunday um, we didn't use that setup up in the sanctuary. We wound up with a, a basically a, a <coughs> webcam that goes like goes you buy to attach to your computer, except mm -hmm. it was sitting on a tripod. Uh, and in our fellowship hall, which is, it's not as open and as echoey as, as this is, but I was amazed at how well that microphone picked up the noise and the sound from members of the congregation who might have been sitting, yeah, 25, 30 feet away. Wow. Um, it was... Uh, and, and what people could see in that. Yeah, oh nice. Uh, but so, so that was a much less expensive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing about need, I'm, I'm not brought up about, yeah, I've gotta have somebody to manage it. Yeah. Um, our system is more complicated at, at the church than I think we would want or need. Yeah. I think it's just, it's hard to, this one, this one, I labeled it, it said camera. Uh -huh. This one does follow you around. So when people speak, the camera, you know, follows it. And maybe that's the case with the owl. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, so, anyway, so we're, I'm still looking at it. I still, you know, need to come up and get some more numbers to see once Orca comes down. We'll have a little better idea about that. But honestly, you know, we all know I, we got to cut, I got to find 30 grand. You know, I, I can find water sewer money for retirement. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, yeah. So that I can do. And I'm still trying to look through the general fund to see where I can pick that up. So, you know, that's the hard thing right now is it's something you could budget for in the next year's budget. But this year, you know, we're already, well, it is a challenge. We're already starting. It would be nice to see if there's a some sort of potential cost Co sharing cooperative throughout the community, you know. Yeah, or yeah. <coughs> I mean, there are a couple of people that, that are be, coming to mind um, as that well. That would be nice. Um, um, the guy who's done all of the uh, Wi-Fi throughout Bethel, oh, yeah. um, Justin. Justin, Justin Cork, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he might, he might be willing to help with 
sourcing things. So just he thinking might. about what our community partnerships are. That you it know. Justin's good. I mean, he's hard yeah. to wrangle right now because it's yeah. been so busy. We've seen him a couple times off and on. But, but I'm I, not saying it's not a good idea. I'm just saying yeah. I'm not prepared to give you anything because I still need to see uh, meet with there Orca might There then, might also be some civic-minded organizations like churches or, or Kiwanis or, or not Kiwanis. Mason. Yeah, who might be willing to, you know, Rotary to, to give the town a couple hundred bucks or whatever, right. to, yep. or buy a piece of equipment that now has their name on it. Right, that's right. Uh, yeah. So the Mason Mason's plasma screen TV. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. BRI owl. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, I mean, I think it's worth you know asking about them, and, yep. and if if you you know reach out to Justin, that's too would be a good idea because he you know he can get stuff free, and sometimes you know deals on stuff. So. Right, and that was my thought. Is he's sort of in that world? He may be able to find us some deals and do some of the initial setup yeah. if we can then find somebody who's running it. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, I did know, to remind Digital, that when I met with TJ, he said if you did the owl, obviously we still need the television. For us, it's smarter to get a television than a monitor. Because the television, you could do the trainings, you could mm. have laptops, you know, it's a little more versatile. Um, and, but he said he could find one cheaper and a little bit smaller than this, um, than what they included <coughs> for another town. But, so we're just kind of waiting. But, yeah. you know, without some of the front of it, it's a big point yeah. at this point. So. Well, not to mention, like you said, I think the biggest challenge we have right now is normally budget challenges don't happen until January, February, when we're in right. the winter. Because, you know, you never know if the winter's going to be bad or not bad. Right. Yep. And, you know, we're already behind the eight ball, $30,000 on the handed down retirement um, issues that now we have to be faced with, which is, so that's one and a half cents on the tax rate. And then, you know, you know, we waive the rental fee you know, for here, for the historic site, you know, all Anyways, those things, all you stuff. know, who knows what appropriations will be, you know, right. made or so not made. So the, the, the answer is it's not going to happen this year. Right, it may no, be. I, but I mean, it, I left it, not unless if it was gifted or something. <laughs> no. Well, but, so, but that's, but that's, yeah. but whether or not it should be considered in next year's budget. Oh, absolutely. Is a completely so. different question. Oh, well, I, I think know. so. And, and definitely, uh, I have a note in the budget. Yeah. It gives us time to figure out cost structure, potential sharing partners, and, and, and all that. And the critical piece of how do you get it staffed. Right. And especially right. if others are going to use it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, well, and I think it'll be some sort of, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how we shift into winter time and what COVID does. What it may prompt it? this issue, and then you might get community partners who step up more readily because they see, you know, it's a more immediate need. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So I'll, I'll do some digging. There you go, thanks. Yeah, no, it's worth it. And so, and I'm still, like I said, when I hear back from Rob, I'll have more data from, you know, from and Orca. It, so I, you know, but I already met with Vermont Digital and um, Jean had got some information. So, I mean, we already, you know, we're, we're yeah. working on it. And, then, and because this does <laughs> impact the individuals <coughs> at a town hall setting that normally would be at a select board meeting, you know, this might not be a bad one for town meeting day that we put as a separate line item, you know, separate line item vote, yeah. whatever it comes out to be, X amount of dollars or whatever it is, and yeah. that way the community has a direct vote into, you know, does that amount of money yeah. to expand yeah. the opportunities, you know, make sense to the community or not. But, I mean, who knows what else we'll get served with here between now and October, November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesse. I have a, a question and a comment. Um, comment is just to throw my personal support and the U.S. support behind moving forward and investigating more about how we can make this happen to make it digitally accessible. Like, in our discussion, we had, we, it was pretty clear, even with our meetings, Accessibility reasons, like for people with kids, for people who you know can't get out of their houses at six o'clock in 
Yeah, we're looking at, yeah, we went with Vermont Digital. They just had them look. Gene had some information from his church. Um, Orca video, they have an owl, and Rob said maybe that we could use their owl so we wouldn't even have to purchase one. But if, say, the EIC wants to use it, we don't own it. So we'd still need a TV. So we're looking at kind of all the options. And the EIC was pretty open. And, you know, I think Gene had challenged you guys to find someone to help staff it. So, um, which is good. Um, which would be helpful. So they were saying maybe we need a different camera, a sound, like a mixing board and processor to get it. Like, I'm, I'm curious where all the different. Well, um, I, in the packet that's on the website, uh, you can, if you look at it, you can see Vermont Digital gave us their, they had done one for, well, I can't remember whose town office, but it was a camera and their whole package. So it was like 2,600 bucks for the camera, the laptop for 900, which we don't need because we already have one. Um, another, the cart was like 800 and, or the TV was 850 and then the cart to put it all on so it's all in one unit was like another 950 bucks. But um, when I talked to the, our contact there, TJ, he said, oh, we could get you a TV cheaper and you wouldn't need this cart if you don't go with this system. If you went with the Owl, that's about a thousand bucks. I'm not sure if there's an annual subscription fee or whatever with the Owl about uploading or storage. Um, so we have the laptop. So we're looking at different options and Jean's at their church didn't give me the details, but they'd spent about five thousand dollars on their mix, and then another thousand on internet hardware. So for some of those costs we wouldn't have, um, and we were just saying, you know, the TV would be good because it would help, you know, for trainings that people could do here too as well, because the state's doing a lot of their VTrans training. So, um, so yeah, so we're kind of looking at all options. Obviously, you know, the 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 other one we've done before is just Zoom, and and um, which is a little bit tricky, or not tricky, you just have to kind of turn the laptop and then you're trying to deal with it, so it's mm -hmm. not, not ideal, but. We're, we're, yeah, we're broadcasting to Zoom and Facebook. At the uh, church, at, nice. From the church, and uh, both of those can be interactive. So that's a, and so our, the people who are staffing it uh, are, they're running the mixer, they're running the camera, they're using open source software to, to do all the mixing and, and so on. So there's, there's a pretty steep learning curve for what we're trying to do. And our stuff is all hardwired into the building. <laughs> wow. So it, it's, a, it's an ambitious project. Our technical advisor with Seth Stoddard, who is the uh, uh, Chandler, their, yeah. mm -hmm. their guy, and he's a member of the White Church or the Brick Church. Nice. And so he's set up a system there that's pretty much a mirror image. Um, of course, we might have some challenges with what we can and cannot do with the building, too, right? Right, because of have to be uh, historical in nature. Cause yeah. Well, that's the merits of the cart with the yeah. TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're not mounting yeah. it to a wall. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. that whole. Yeah. And yeah. the advantage of an owl is, see, our camera is only in one place. It's in a fixed location, so it only sees in one direction. I mean, it sees, you know, out 120 degrees maybe, but the owl sees 360. So it would see us and it would see you at the same time. And that's a, you know, that's two cameras. <laughs> yeah, I think it follows whoever talks, right? So yeah, it's always the same thing. thing. Well, it's cool and it depend, creepy all yeah, at the same and, time. <laughs> and, and, in, yeah, and in Zoom, yeah, it has its drawbacks. But. Yeah. True enough. But anyway. so we're looking at, you know, we're kind of looking at all options from the, this to that trying to sort it out. So we'll have a little more information um, at some point once, um, and then we'll make it a decision. But there is no in the budget discussion already. I keep the same spreadsheet, put mm -hmm. a note in there for the next budget discussion too, just in case. So. Sure. And then, you know, like, like Lindley was saying, who knows what will happen yeah. fall or winter, and maybe the need becomes yeah, and then there greater. Be, but then there's you know, money yeah. that would come with that, probably. You know what I mean? need might become greater or mm -hmm. yeah. we'll see how that <coughs> no we're not done yet with that so um
town manager's report. So we, let's see, so, um, okay. So Ryan, I met with Jeff Gilman at WB Rogers on Friday with the East Bethel, and we're gonna do Gilead um, another day. We got through East Bethel though, so that's good. I think he's gonna start, um, this week I think, is gonna start hopefully East Bethel, and then he's gonna do Sanders Road because he won that bid, which was separate a while ago, and then he'll move on to Gilead. So he's, he's clear that you're coming and you're turning right off of, to go up the hill toward Oh, yeah, you mean the parameters of the job? Yeah, yeah. we walk the entire time. The reason job. I'm asking is because my daughter, who lives the other direction, Across the bridge. <laughs> thought she saw somebody marking or doing a survey or something, marking. On the opposite side on of the, the bridge towards the side range? Of, yes. That's probably the people who are doing, taking the dam out. Ah. That would okay. be my guess. It's not oh, us. Yeah. It's probably someone taking the dam out because they're doing that. Okay. Is that owned by like electric company or how's that? No, I can't remember. Matt Rowski is the engineer and I think it was part of I want to say way over partnership and yeah. I yeah. was we talked about it last year. Yeah, they bought, I was gonna say <coughs> no, I was gonna say River partnership. partnership. Yeah. 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 She was she was wondering because Yeah, she, so that's my guess. Yeah, it's that. Got, it's not that. us. Yeah, and we did what well, we did, we walked the whole thing with them. So So the well, dam we, is coming out of it. That's what they <laughs> supposed to come last year and they didn't take it out, but um, so you saw the packaging happen at Municipal Park and lot. that looks nice, very much nicer driving on anyways. Um, working with Wells Communication and Fire Chief Dave Baltergetti to install a repeater that we budgeted for to increase the communication area for the road um, crew. So that would go up on North Road. Um, I already got permission from Dylan McCullough to put up on their barn with the fire. I'm just waiting for Randolph's fire department to get their ladder truck fixed <laughs> so we can uh, have a little assistance there. So, um, can't, can't use that boom truck that, uh, we're not down, the, I know they'd say, they're no. telling me it's not my oh, fire. Yeah, oh, it's so not. Like, well, it's no, it's going to be up there. Yeah, up there. so that's what I heard. Um, huh. the other thing is I gave you a copy of the RFP for the Bethel for All. Um, those are in yep. and there's, I think we got four of them. I want to say there's four that we're reading that are due that um, not for you guys but um, those of us on the committee are reading them and have to provide feedback by Wednesday at 5. So um, you'll, I just thought you might want to see it so I that when you, go to, when you go to um, approve, you know, because eventually we'll, whoever the RFP, the flow bidder is, will come in front of you. I'm just wondering, how, how do they figure it's a group um, stormwater plan with village accessibility. I mean, this seemed like two totally Lucas different. Oh, I know, it's just funny. It's just the way two that totally they different the way animals. They, I know, it's funny because it also has an economic component. So when they put out, you know, the RFP, you know, people, it's, you know, and that's what they do. They, there's people just looking at the state bid site all the time for these type of things. And then they partner, like Du Bois and King partners with other people to put a bid forward. and. But you're right, it's funny, it's like downtown yeah, accessibility plus stormwater, you know. Yeah, it's, it's funny, but I think if, there, if any of them have done a Better Connections grant before, there's, I think there's usually a piece of, a stormwater piece that comes with it. So I think they just know what to look for. But you're right, Paul, it's odd. It is odd. So um, just in case you heard, uh, there was an accident this morning involving one of the town's equipment. It was uh, all of our processes procedures were followed. It was not our operator. Um, our operator was had all his lights on, followed all of the traffic standards, and was going to turn left of Christian Hill, and someone decided to pass him on the left and ignore the fact that blinker was on. So oh, hit a piece, so obviously they um, they hit a piece of our heavy equipment. The equipment I believe is fine and our driver is as is the driver of the truck, but um, you know state police were called and they were unable to come because they were out on other, another call, but um, filed an insurance claim and all that sort of thing. So everybody was fine, but um, you know, so, but that's what you have insurance for. But our operator was fine and it was in no way, shape, or form his fault. So, um, but just in case you hear the rumor around town, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody's okay. It's always my first question. You fix everything else. So, so we'll be dealing with the other driver's insurance company? No, so what happens is we file, <coughs> no, we'll go through our insurance company and they'll subrogate oh, okay. out of the other. Okay. It's just, okay. yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll do the negotiating. Yeah, and the <laughs> yeah. police will, um, the BSP will call and, you know, we file, they'll file.
filed the report, and then, um, mm, okay. you know, um, Alan, the road foreman, is certainly adamant that um, that maybe a ticket is issued. And I just said, you know, be adamant about it because, you know, the driver, can, our driver can always, if someone fights it, our driver will just go to court and testify. Mm, I got a problem yeah. with that. So, um, but, so we'll see that's all out of our hands, of the legal, you know, that portion. But it has been reported to all the authorities, and nobody was hurt. Big thing, and, uh, but so just in case you hear it, it happen. So yes, Tetro's coming along. Um, <clears throat> they're hoping to wrap up here in a couple of weeks. We'll some odds and ends left, um, but um, it'll be nice to have a, have just a little quiet. The next year we'll spend a lot of time doing locates, and you know for the next right for the next phase. So it's always looking ahead. But that is it. We covered everything in there. Notes and my notes. So unless you have some questions, I'm good. Anything further for Therese? So we good. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. We have the select board meeting minutes from the 26th of July. Looked good to me. Yeah. Make a motion. We accept. I wasn't here, so. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, I'll say yay. 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 Okay. And there were some other communications in the packet in the back. Yep, so you can see that the listers, um, now Judy is now the, the chair. chair of the board of listers. Um, now, is she still going to finish out her full term? No. Or, or no. is she done, done? I don't know when she's going to retire, but. Okay. I figured that step will probably be It is. To tell you I expect any, any day. That's what I, I was assuming know. her. Yeah. You know, was yeah, be because of the yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought too, so I don't yeah. know. So then, yeah, rec committee rec minutes. Um, obviously, they, they ended up having to cancel the duathlon because nobody registered. So you saw that in the minutes, which was too bad. Uh, hopefully next time people, you know, register in advance. So that was too bad. Also, you were all handed up presents. Yeah. You were given presents from the Historical Society. Uh, Joanne Marshall was in today and gave them to Chris and I and, and uh, thanked you all for your consideration for the last meeting. The other thing in there are just financials. Obviously, it's July. Um, I did go through and write a note. Um, so that you can see what we're looking for from each department, how I'm gonna to try to, you know, how much I have as an unbudgeted expense for retirement. So that's kind of the way I look at everything, is like in public works, at $16,000, um, 66 in reg, so I. I appreciated those notes. So I just try to have to go through and look at it. I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, you know, it's July. I'm already trying to look to see where I can save money. So, you know, I'll do what I can. But at least that way, it kind of lets everybody know, and then I'm going to write that up and let. Um, well, in some way, I guess it. it's good that we found out about it in oh, July and not like April. Exactly. You know, then yep. And then what happens is, oh, I will. Dietrich usually just copies the um, financials for each one of the department heads, and um, so yeah. when she does it in August, I'm going to make a note and just and let them know, like, okay, so Alan. I need you to try to save sixteen thousand dollars out of your budget, and here's some ideas how we're going to come up with the money. Which so yeah, you know what? Like, like it if is you challenging, go through, uh, but you know what? If you don't ask, you, you don't start. Very, you get go. You know, let's mm. do what we can. It's, it's really going to be weather dependent. Like if yeah. we go through a, a very fair weather yeah, then winter, no then problem. probably no problem. But if yeah. we go through a classic, how yeah. did we end the year? Oh. I'm not. I. I. We don't know yet. Well. We haven't been audited yet, so I don't right. like to say too much. Obviously, we made out because we didn't open the pool, so the pool is not self-sufficient by any stretch. So obviously, you've saved all that labor, and you know, so there was savings from the pool, and um, there were some other savings. So I think that we, um, so you there's know, my my early numbers look like we have a surplus. There was quite a bit of savings, but we also lost some localized revenue too. Yeah, but right. not yeah. much because the but, pool, you know, expenses yeah. so far out. But did, the I'm, mm. yeah, more just curious. Like, yeah. do you see some of that maybe helping defer some of that cost? So it then, could. Sure. So then, Alan's number is not sixteen; it's twelve or four. And 
you know. It, it's possible, you know, because there is obvious, you know, if we, it would be great if we finally have an undesignated fund balance, wouldn't it? And um, so, and then we could talk about, you know, what to do with it. But I think that you have to come out of the gate with an expectation that, hey, you know, we're, this is where we're at. So everybody needs to rethink overtime. Everybody, needs, you know what I mean? It doesn't, I'm not saying we're going to come up with it all, but it doesn't hurt to set the standard early to say, we need to look for this. So if you think this is the year you're going to do X, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> well, just, it doesn't hurt to drop the challenge with it's the department saying, heads that's on. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, show yeah. me what you can come up with. You exactly. Know. I mean, water, sewer. You know. I know that, you know, Tim runs the system tight enough. I think he'll, it'll be fine. And um, for them, it's a little bit different. It's not as much money. It's, you know, the biggest department, obviously, is, is road. So we'll see. But they also have the biggest budget, too, to play with. You not play with. But, you know, if we don't have enough salt, last year we said, okay, you spent more gravel, less salt. This year it's going to be like, yeah how we do but this year he also started with stock so he's in a good position so we'll just see we'll i think see the scary thing is more i mean it's one thing to be hit in the short term like this but i don't think it's something that's going to cure itself in a one time hit you know no. i could easily see us getting hit maybe not this hard but no. definitely no. higher mm -hmm. increases yeah. than yeah. normal yeah and it, it's just and we hadn't it's seen one system, we hadn't so. seen one for a while either so we had you know, our norm was 13.84, so I had budget for 15. You know, what I, you saw this was crazy. So next year, obviously, we'll do a little more. Is there a way for us to transfer to the other one? Anybody I going to look into so. that? Was, she said it seemed no. like it was a hard no. It was a hard <laughs> no. I asked her before when I came, because I was part of Beamers, and just said, you know, how did they end up here? She's like, I don't know, somebody a long time ago made a decision. And I said, can we transfer? She said, no. And then I emailed her and said, well, in light of all the new challenges, blah, 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 can we go to Beamers? And she's like, never. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Is that just her opinion? Or? No, no, so she's, she's been there a long stop time. stop asking, you're not getting this one. Yeah, she was very yeah. nice about it. But, um, cause I thought in a way maybe they'd want you to go, but they probably don't want to transfer that liability to Beamers because Beamers is, self-sufficient right. they kind of take care of their you know their own money so they're not this big outstanding thing so mm -hmm. so yes i definitely think we need to do that um obviously i look at health insurance every year and sometimes if it's close i just we've stayed where we are at mvp but we'll have to see what you know if, if blue cross blue shield comes in with a lower so, you know we did that for a couple of years you switch every year was a different change year change year change year change year and then a couple of years blue cross was higher and then it's kind of been so, so we'll look at that again this year like we always sure. do um, but it's tough, you know, that's, those are the bigger portions of the budget, insurance and, uh, you know, salaries and yeah. retirement. Hmm. But you're right, Chris, it's a broken system and we're, you know, I've, I'm Everyone not comfortable knows. budgeting just 15% again. I mean, we'll have to budget higher. So. And again, it's one of those where you, you just don't, don't know. know. It's kind of like the school budget. You're budgeting for, a, you think you know what the number is going to be and then they set the number after your, mm -hmm. your yeah. budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah after it's like, oh. Yeah. So it, it's such a backward system. Well, and the other thing is, too, is is that, you know, if they do this table every five years, that's crazy because I did review the statute. I wrote to the lady and said, what, to, to Jen, who sent me to someone else, and I said, you know, can I see the statute, please? And she said, sure. So she sent it to me, very nice. And uh, But it says they have to do every five years. I'm like, you should be doing this every year, not every five years. So last time they did it, we took, it was in October, so it was totally out of. Mm. I wasn't sure, but and yeah, it's only gonna get worse. I mean, I'm afraid so. Unless, you know, point. they need well, to stop. And they need think to start, that you would have an option. Like, you, you need to start putting people you know, in a, like 457 yeah. plans. Like, so, we've come in higher now and sure. stop doing this defined benefit plan. It, it yeah. seems to me that it, it might not it won't make any difference, but it wouldn't hurt for us as a town to formally. Uh, contact our representative, notify our representatives that this kind of thing after the adoption of a budget is, is a hardship on the towns. And this kind of thing is gonna happen. We know it's gonna happen. But if you can say, all right, we know that town budgets are starting on June 1st or whatever, that would be the effective date of this this kind of an action i well, think they, it's appropriate we've already done that yeah they've already done that the uh, one the, of them wasn't a very favorable response yeah but we've already told <laughs> we talked to them and so we let them know 
I talked to someone at the state, so we are, and the state has the same fiscal year we do. It's not a surprise to them when our fiscal year is, because right. the state's the same. But we did already speak to our state representatives, and they've uh, both, uh, or we talked to Kirk and, um, and Dick McCormick, they're both, you know, continuing to look into it. I did send them the statute and stuff, but um, pretty much the state's response is, this is the way it's written in statute. Um, I know one of the legislatures was, you know, certainly going to look into it, but they're the ones who make the statute. So if they need right. to change, they need to change it. But um, so no, everybody's aware. I was prepared to make a very large thing about it, but when I read the statute, I realized I did not have much. Well, What's spe the but then espe yes. especially if it requires a statute. But they know that, and I've told both. I I've, I've sent the information to Dick and to. It's a, I mean, so it's, they're aware of what the statute is. I mean, the retirement the and pension programs have been known for probably 20 years now that they are broken programs. And you've seen it at the more the private level. The private levels, you know, like my company, you know, they froze those pensions years ago, you know, froze them and then have went to a 401k type system. And the states and the unions chose not to do that. And, you know, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I mean, it's continuing to get worse. So it's, um, and it just, I guess, it's frustrating when we don't have an option. Like you think you at least yeah, like, yeah. like, can yep. you transfer to somebody else? Like you know, you just stuck. And, and unless they, you know, unless our legislative body, you know, makes makes adjustments and not failure, which you know they really need to. Because nobody's making out on the deal right now. I mean, you got the teachers in the state, you know, looking at their retirements being a lot less than what they thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah, and it affects everybody. I mean, it affects mine. I went yeah. through and looked at it. It means, you know, if they, if depending on the, the changes that they had suggested, that they haven't adopted because they formed a committee, but when they had the suggestions they had adopted before, I was going to lose money because mm -hmm. of the new plan. It's not what you signed up for, and now all of a sudden. Because of the benefit, yeah, you'd have to work an additional, whatever, six, seven years, seven, and each, right. yeah, and the benefit was, it was a significant loss yeah. for what you had worked for and started the system at, and um, <coughs> so, but then they kind of put hold on that and said that they would, you know, they have a committee forming, so I guess. It's one of those hard decisions that it just, you need to go into it looking at kind of like ripping the bandaid off, you know, mm, that's true. it just got to happen. I think if you're not vested, think, maybe just give you your money back. Or put it, yours in, the contribution <laughs> into the 401k, yeah. but just stop. From yeah. here going, anybody who's in it, close retirement, mm -hmm. just let them finish out. But you, they have to do something different. You just can't. And they it. had some changes, and one of them was not letting anyone be fully vested for 10 years. And mm -hmm. um, I think that was going to be discouraging for young people. Yeah, it's usually it's what, yeah. five? It's five yeah. net yeah. right now for visas, and that's <clears> five for <throat> beamers. But, um, Especially when the average awesome. person only works in a place now for four or five years. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, those, those mm -hmm. days of having those 25, 30, mm -hmm. 40 year, you know, mm -hmm. employees and mm -hmm. careers. But when right. you had a defined benefit, it was worth it. For the yeah. Oh yeah, like the good years and stuff. I mean, they were 25 years. They were fully well, that was, the, that, mm -hmm. that was part of the mid 20th century uh, employers literally had to have benefits or they wouldn't have employees. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the benefits packages that, that were, were put in place at that time, including pensions, health care. The health care package then was a whole lot more comprehensive than, than they are now. Uh, yeah. it's, I mean, I understand from the perspective of the employer that it's one thing, but from the perspective of the employees, mm -hmm. somebody gets it, somebody's paying the pipe or exactly. paying the bill. And then yeah. in their case, they're going to sign up and this is what you expect, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, so by the way, you're going to get less money so than what you originally planned. And, you know, and obviously, I mean, it's part of your package, and then you're, okay, now on top of that, you can work seven years longer. Yeah, it's okay. not fair. The I'll system's not fair anyway. It's not 82 fair to the... 82 will still nope. be a battle. <laughs> I mean, it's good for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Job security. It's not fair for anybody. But, yeah. All right. Any, any other business come before the board before we move into executive session to 
talk about the town manager's goals for the I was going to say we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just don't leave it mm. I move we go into executive session Second. to discuss town manager's goals. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.